We're coming to the table of joy today, and we are concluding this transformative experience. We embarked on this journey by first exploring the essence of hospitality, where we open up a seat at the table for everyone. The next Sunday, we discuss the profound depths of love. A love created at the table because of God's love for each of us. The next table offering was about the serene atmosphere of peace that if we do the first two, completes our very soul. We then came to the table with the uplifting spirit of grace, where grace allows each of us to come to the table just as we are. Our series of hospitality, love, peace, grace, and joy are all bonded together. You cannot have love without hospitality. You cannot have peace without grace. And you cannot have grace without joy. A life coming together, initiating a process of welcoming and inviting others to share in the communal experience at the table. Paul says in verses 1 through 4, and I am doing this with not the whole scripture, so this is April talking. If you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if, God, if Christ's love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with one another and love one another. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't try to sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside to help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting ahead of others and forget to lend a helping hand. Paul reminds the church of their reality, one that is deeply rooted in Christ. As believers, he reminds them of who they are, and they are God's children. And sometimes we need reminders. They are to be themselves and imitate Christ as individuals and as a church. Love, peace, grace, and joy. For these are feelings, they're characteristics that you will experience when you offer hospitality to others. Paul says, to invite others to the table is to be like Christ. Miss Sally says, joy is a feeling of contentment that all is right in the world with me, with my friends, with my family, and my relationship with God, end quote. I feel like the apostle agrees with Sally. He basically said the same thing. Paul says that following Christ leads you to an unspeakable joy. Be the kind of community that you already were in Christ, he says, but church, I need you to know this is who you are. A community that has unshakable joy and unfathomable joy. Like one of my favorite songs, which we're going to sing later. I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart to stay. Does anybody know that? Okay, good. If the warmth of Christ's love has touched your soul, if the comfort of his spirit has soothed your heart, if the power of compassion has transformed your life, let your joy overflow like a river, which not only nourishes you, but others around you. Paul says if you do any of these things, you bring Christ joy. So why is it so hard? 
Why is it so hard to do these things? Extend our hands to the poor. Extend our hands to the hungry. Those that are different. Those that are trying to make a way when there seems to be no way. And they were doing that in Philippi. They were slipping back into who they were, not who they are. And Paul says, aren't these the ones that Jesus went to find, went to heal? He reminds us that we are to help as well. So if you've done this, raise your hand. Have any of you watched the Chosen series? Oh, boy. Well, the good news is I don't have a lot to tell you about it, but... You know what? I tried to watch the series while Becky was in Alaska. And you know I had a whole year to do so. I could not do it. I really, really tried to do it, Miss Jean, but I could not figure out what on earth was going on. And Becky's in Alaska saying, oh, it's a great show. You should watch it all the way through. I could not. I got to episode three and I was just confused. I could not keep up with who the characters were. Seeing a different perspective of the disciples of the Son of God was weird to me. It was different because my mind has been so wrapped around for so long what I always thought Christ was. And guess what? Now that she's here, it makes sense because we've sit We've paused, we've restarted, we've paused, and we've talked in between so that now I know who is who. And it's a great series. Ask Michael and Ezra. I know they've seen it. It's a great series. I finally understand it, and I love it. I cannot wait to catch up on the next episode. You know, there's... There's just so many reasons why that I like this show, this series. Because there's so much emotion and so much humor wrapped into the fabric of this series. And because The Chosen shows Jesus as a person, not something that we've always thought we knew that he was, as someone who is human very human in the show, but divine as well. The show humanizes Jesus, revealing the depth of his emotions from the understanding and grace that he showed to everyone in the series and the experiences he shared, such as hunger and thirst and sadness. You know, it's pretty cute, but Becky reminded me that He winked at the disciples in this show. Can you imagine Jesus winking at you? Those are things we don't think about. We don't think of Jesus being like us. It reminds us that Jesus was truly human. Human just like us. And we often, I think, maybe it's just me, overlook the fact that Jesus had joy in his life. The people who wrote in the Bible did not give a description of Jesus really being joyful. But there was so many times that he had to be. So this show reminded me that he smiled. He loved. He laughed, just like we do. It's a powerful reminder of the contagious nature of joy. Even in the face of adversity, which Jesus met a lot of, as exemplified by Paul's joy in serving others and in serving Christ. Paul's life was defined by his unwavering commitment to spreading the gospel of Christ to everyone that he could. His letters are a testament to this fiery passion that builds up inside of him, perhaps rooted in his own experiences of being marginalized and misunderstood. Because we all know that he was once denied a seat at the table 
in many places because Paul was feared. Paul understood firsthand the power of inclusion and acceptance. Paul's relentless pursuit of Christians made him a feared figure because he wanted to kill them. But God recognized his potential and gave him a chance for redemption. So by inviting Paul to sit at the table, God transformed him from a prosecutor into a servant. Miss Sarah says, to me, joy means my heart is full of love. My family and grandchildren bring me lots of joy. Sunrises and sunsets, singing and hugs all bring me joy. End quote. We all know that what brings one person joy may not bring another person joy. Others may not need hugs or singing like Sarah, but they find joy in other ways. And Paul is aware of this. He's aware that his love for others is fueled by deep desire for their joy, their spiritual, and their growth. Their development in church, in their lives, and within their families. And when they grew, Paul was joyful. You know, as a pastor, I experienced the same, the similar overflow of joy when I witnessed the faith community of any kind growing, when I witnessed the congregation growing together, working together. Anyone else feel joyous when you see that? We're a lot of happy people here, aren't we? But knowing that I've somehow contributed to spreading God's love fills me with a very profound fulfillment of joy. It's a privilege to witness to the church community shining Christ's light into lives. To those that are seeking hope and joy. And Paul's desire for the Philippians to share this joy resonates deeply within me. And I encourage you, as we end this series, to spread that joy with others, with strangers. Kanonia is a Greek word for communion. It's a foundation of true joy. Christ's joy unites those who prioritize their relationship with him and care for others. Embracing our challenges rooted in our faith and purpose allows us to visually embody the transformative power of Christ's love and action for us. Our joy in sharing others' burdens reveals us as true disciples, reflecting the compassionate heart and compassionate hands of our Savior. Michael says that he finds joy in the soaring eagle the majestic mountain, and God's love for everyone, end quote. What a reminder. Thank you, Michael, for reminding us that God's love is in everything and it is ever present. His quote reminds me of the scripture of soaring on the wings of eagles, which is Isaiah A beautiful picture to remind us of God's love and the joy taken when he formed creation. Paul emphasized to the Philippians that their selfish act of service and humility were undeniable evidence of God's active work in their lives. So gathering at the Lord's table begins with welcoming others. It moves to fostering an atmosphere of hospitality, of love, of grace, and peace. And gathering at the table creates a true joy. And after I watch the show, I know it brings a smile to his face. 